They was all right. They was cool people. They ain't mess with nobody. They was all right. They just moved out. Whoever did this, it didn't make no sense to do them like that. Like, they was good people. Stanley Peck's sister says she can't understand why someone would want to kill him and the mother of his children, Tia Pittman. They didn't deserve what happened to them. <laughs> Welcome back to Evil Uncovered, where we delve into the darkest corners of humanity to bring you the most shocking true crime stories. Today, we're uncovering what happened to Tia Pittman and Stanley Peck. Before we begin, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos. Now let's dive in. Born and raised in Saginaw, Michigan, Tia Nicole Pittman was empathetic, Afrocentric, and bubbly. Most that loved her said she was full of life and laughter. Tia always had a smile on her face and a hug to share. Her main priorities centered around motherhood, family, education, social justice issues, and cultural awareness. She graduated in the year of 2000 from Mackinac Academy as class president and class valedictorian. Although she received academic scholarships to Michigan State University and Delta College, her spirit led her to a life in New York where she would develop the craft and work in the field of film and TV. The music industry, marketing, fashion, and many other things. True to her well-rounded and eclectic nature, Tia also has certification as a dental assistant. Stanley was born in Haiti. He was the third of seven siblings. Peck moved to Tampa when he was about 12 and graduated from Jefferson High School. An outgoing and generous jokester, Peck loved the bachelor's life. According to his sister, he went to a club every night while in Tampa. She didn't ever think he was going to be a family man. He would say, I'm not having kids. Meeting Pittman about five years ago changed that for him. Peck moved to New York a few years after graduating high school. He was drawn to Tia's personality. She had joint custody of her son, who was 11 at that time, from a previous relationship. When Pittman and Peck moved back to Saginaw in 2017, Pittman was pregnant with their first child. She wanted to be close to family and make her hometown a better place. When she first got there, she asked, what can I do? She said she saw all the violence on TV and wanted to help. While there in Saginaw, Pittman helped co-found the I Am Community Foundation, a nonprofit that aims to improve education and spark civic engagement. She volunteered for Mother and Justice, a group of engaged mothers who advocate for family-friendly policies and for the CAN Council, a nonprofit for neglected and abused children. She thought she could save the world, according to one of her friends. When you think of Tia, you think of a cape. Meantime, Peck worked construction and other jobs to provide for the family. Stanley Peck and Tia Pittman moved to Tampa in 2019 to be with his father as he fought cancer. After his father passed, the couple decided to stay and Pittman gave birth to a baby girl, the couple's second child. On Halloween morning 2019, as Tia and Stanley arrived to the home that they were staying in with relatives, they were approached by 26-year-old Tyrell Kendrick, who was on a bike passing by. 
Then before Tia could open the door, Kendrick pulled out a firearm, discharging it into the couple, ending their lives. The investigation started. Police responded to the 1700 block of West Walnut Street shortly after 7 a.m. on October 31st after receiving a report of shots fired in that area. After arriving, they found Peck and Pittman suffering from firearm wounds. Peck was pronounced at the scene and Pittman was taken to a local hospital where she was later pronounced from her injuries. Both of the couple's children were at home at the time of the incident. According to the family, the couple were there providing care for Peck's father as he had died. Detectives say their investigation led them to the 26 year old and he was arrested without incident. In addition to the first degree murder charges, Kendrick is charged with robbery with a firearm and possession of a firearm by a felon. Kendrick and another man were riding on bikes looking for someone to rob when he first noticed the couple. The trial started in early 2022. We learned that two witnesses had come forward and one witness told detectives he was in contact with Kendrick and another person in the Robles Park area about two hours before the incident took place. During that meeting, Kendrick produced a firearm from his waistband and said they were looking to do a lick. The second witness was Peck's sister. Jermina Peck wiped away tears as she remembered being startled awake on Halloween morning. Noise, it was loud enough to wake me up out of my sleep. She recalled in front of a Tampa courtroom. She testified that she jumped out of bed to check on her brother and his girlfriend. As she ran toward the front door, she could hear commotion. I was opening it. I believe Tia was trying to open it also. And then once the door opened, my brother pushed Tia in. I heard her say, we're getting robbed. I looked up and I seen the man lift up the gun and start shooting at all three. But it was too late. She said the man she saw near her porch that morning pulling the trigger was Tyrell Kendrick. That morning, prosecutors say Kendrick was riding his bike on West Walnut Street in Tampa with another man when he spotted the young parents and tried to rob them. After the incident, witnesses say they saw him speed away on his bicycle. But Kendrick's public defender, Donna Perry, says seeing him leave the scene doesn't prove he murdered anyone. She says the prosecutors pinned the crimes on Kendrick because he was a black man on a bike. She went on to argue that there was no physical evidence or DNA that pointed to her client. The gun used in the shooting was later used for another shooting while my client sat in jail waiting for his trial. Why? Because the real shooter is still out there. Showed up to Jermina Peck's doorstep on Halloween that year. That that man right there, Tyrell Kendrick, is the man responsible for it. I see my brother gasping for air and I held his hand, she said, while dropping her head into her hands and sobbing. Records show that Kendrick was released from state prison in October of 2018 after he served two and a half years for a burglary, grand theft, carrying a concealed weapon, and possession of Mary Jane with intent to sell. In the year 2022, Tyrell Kendrick was sentenced to life in prison as he was convicted for the murders of Stanley Peck and Tia Pittman. This case will have a long lasting effect on two communities, one in Saginaw, Michigan, where she was born and raised, and also Tampa, Florida, where they were just restarting their lives. Tia was said to be goofy and bubbly, always laughing. You know how some people just have that light, according to her friends. The couple's children are staying with one of Peck's sisters, while the family figures out where they'll live in the long term. Her friends and family are hopeful that this tragedy will wake up and shake up 
their communities make them realize that they have a lot of work to do to address gun violence they must come together to work together and act as one they both leave to cherish their memories their children parents and sibling extensive family and a network of close friends that will also cherish their memories and celebrate their lives thank you for joining us into a tragic crime a couple's nightmare unfolds the devastating aftermath if you found this video informative and will want to explore more true crime stories support the channel don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments like and share this video with your friends until next time